Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is now 10am in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. Uh, remember though, if you miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premiere event streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time in the US, which is 7 a.m. in Australia or 10 p.m. if you are in the UK. I hope all you guys and girls are well and that you all had a great weekend. Sniper girl, it's good to see you. How are you? You do 3D since when? I know. Who would have, who would have guessed at Sniper girl that I actually do 3D? You would never know. <laughs> it's good to see you, Sniper girl, and welcome to everyone watching. Uh, remember, if you've got any questions, anyone watching while I'm working, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. If I can give you a hand in any way with anything regarding 3D, um, feel free to ask. Not pretending I know everything, but I'll give it a try. Uh, if you just want to pop in like Sniper Girl and say hello, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. What are we doing? What are we doing, people? We are working on the Temple of the Winds um, 3D model in 3D Studio Max. We've finished the modeling stage where we took some photogrammetry objects and incorporated them into the model and now we're starting the texturing stage in Substance Painter. Sniper Girl says doing well, sunny day so I'm working at making low poly roll cage for the van. I'm doing well, yes, busy as usual. <laughs> I worked over the weekend, that's cool. Um, yep, no, studio is pretty, pretty full on at the moment. <laughs> Actually, I saw in uh, Discord, remember guys and girls, if you haven't joined the Build Us 3D Discord, you should. Um, either type exclamation Discord in Twitch chat or click the blue graphic below my stream in my panels to join the Discord server. I uh, just want to remind you again that only subs can post links in Twitch chat, but everyone can post links on Discord. There's a gallery section where you can show up your work. There's a folio section where you can link to your art station or your web folio or your demo reel. And there's also a tutorials and tips section there now where you can look at some cool tutorials and tips that uh, the users on the Phil Does 3D Discord server have posted. So I encourage you guys to join the Discord server. Sniper Girl says, um, tell your studio to hire me. That way you'll have, have, <laughs> have to work less on weekends. Well, I'll put it to them. <laughs> Again, I don't have anything to do with the hiring at the studio. That's all done by HR and the directors. They don't trust me. <laughs> no, that's not true. Oh, it is true. I don't have any 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 say in the hiring, but they, I'm sure they trust me. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to us, Sniper Girl. It never hurts to us. Uh, so yes, what are we doing? That's right. I'm giving my, my, my plan for the texturing is we're going to do the majority of the texturing as Substance Painter. Um, I will probably end up taking bits and pieces into Mari to do an overpaint on just to add some interest and detail just to make it look a bit more unique. Um, my one criticism of Substance Painter has always been everyone uses the same substances so everyone's work starts to look the same. Um, but you can get around that, like I said, I'll, I'll get around that by just selecting a few bits and pieces and overpainting them in Mari. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> uh, Sniper Girl says, I'm liking photogrammetry, think I have a bit of a talent for it. Well, good to hear. I want to encourage you guys and girls to do photogrammetry because it's a really helpful tool to you making your 3D models. Uh, it really speeds up your workflow. You can get really nice photo realistic results. Uh, it's why all of the studios now are using it. It's been used in film for quite a long time. Uh, games develop now. Games development now is taking much more of an interest in it as well, particularly with all the real time stuff with Nvidia's new uh, RTX cards and things. Smokeberry barbecue. It's good to see you, buddy. Did you have a good weekend, Smokeberry? I hope you're well.
Uh, Sniper Girl says yes and no. I have like 300 substances. Don't think other people's stuff will look like mine. Well, you can now. Now with Alchemist, which is the new program that Substance have just released, uh, you can actually avoid a lot of that now by mixing substances together to create new ones. Uh, so that that's that's going to be a big help to stop everyone's work looking the same. <laughs> And of course, the more substances you have and mix together, the more that uh, your work will look unique. So. You're all right, Smoke. Very good to hear. But yes, I noticed you were doing some photogrammetry work in the Discord server. You posted some links to some stuff you were doing, which is always good to see. And they were looking very nice, Sniper Girl, the stuff that you've made up so far. So guys and girls, jump on the Discord server if you want to see what we're talking about. Sniper Girl posted in the gallery section. That was interesting, Sniper Girl, too, because you said in, in the, one of the posts that you made um, people looking at you really weird because you're taking like 40 photographs of <laughs> one object. I know that feeling. I've had that as well. People see you taking a bunch of photos from different angles or the same thing and they think you're a bit strange. <laughs> Because people aren't used to, the general public are not really used to photogrammetry. So I just thought it was amusing. <laughs> but your tree stump is looking very nice, Snappy Girl. I'm looking at it right now in Discord. Uh, so yeah, don't think if you post in Discord, guys, I'm not going to see it because I have Discord open right next to Twitch chat so I can see them both at the same time. Snappy Girl says, uh, dude, I had, had a woman yelling at me from across the street saying, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Yeah, people find it weird. They think it's weird because, you know, most people, when they take a photograph of something, they may, maybe they'll take two or three shots at the most, not 40 or 50 or 100 <laughs> from all different angles. So I, I, while I haven't had people say anything to me, well, not yet, uh, I have had people look at me really weird because I'm walking around this object taking 100 photographs of it. It's very funny. People give you weird looks. Uh, Snobby Girl says, yeah, took a hundred of a sidewalk section. Because <laughs> remember, if you're doing photogrammetry, more photos the better. There is a point where you can take more than the necessary and all that's going to do is slow down the software that makes the object for you. So a bit of a balance. Don't go, don't go too nuts, but you do want... Rule of thumb is uh, more than less is better. And I see you took some photos of the storm drain there and that came out very nice as well. The uh, the storm drain metal lid. I'll call it a lid. It's probably not called a lid. <laughs> so yes, more photos are better. Make sure the photos are taken on an overcast day. You don't want direct sunlight. Uh, what else? Don't use a zoom lens. Uh, what else? There was something I thought of the other day that I forgot to mention that was really important. What was it? Uh, no zoom lens, overcast day, more photos better. Uh, what was it? What was it? It's gone. It's gone. It'll come to me during the day, I'm sure. Uh, Sniper Girl says, yeah, but it was like uh, three sections worth. I only had a small hole to patch. It was nice and damaged concrete. Well, that's cool. There, there are going to be times where you can't get a photograph because of the object either being too high off the ground for you to photo, to, to, to photograph. Uh, so that you are going to have times where there may be holes or there may be sections where the texture isn't completely covered. Uh, that's something we actually have to look at in our model here because there are a couple of sections here on this um, on this statue up here, for instance, that I couldn't get to because this statue, like my head comes up to about here. So there was no way for me to get up here to take photographs. Uh, we're going to have to fix that in Mari. We'll take all that when, when the time comes though. So yep, yeah, th there are going to be times where you can't... Um, well, you can't get a photo, so you're going to have a hole, or you're going to have a missing texture. One of the two. So, uh, what did I want to talk about first? I just wanted to give people a little bit of time to pop into the stream before I started talking about something, which is, we are working in Substance Painter. So, we're getting Substance to 
to export out our textures for our model here. Now the problem we run into is in Max here, until Algorithmic release the Substance plugin, which, which won't really help what we're doing at the moment anyway, the, the uh, Substance plugin that Algorithmic have for 3D Studio Max works with the SBZAR files, so the, the actual substances. It allows you to, to use substances in Max. But we're not doing that. We're actually creating using substances in Painter and getting Painter to save out bitmaps. So that plugin is not going to help us here anyway. Uh, but Algorithmic haven't released the new plugin for Max 2020 yet. They're due to any day now. It's just in the final stages of testing at the moment. So I just want that point number one. If you want to use an SBZAR file uh, in Max 2020, you can't do that just yet until Substance released the plugin, the updated plugin 2.2.1, which is due any day. Uh, Sniper Girl says, oh, there's something you can't take pictures of. You want pictures of fallen down trees. Only ones I found were right up close to other trees and couldn't get a photo of it. Yeah, that's another problem you might run into. Uh, I run into that all the time when I'm doing um, photogrammetry of building facades for the studio. There may be a tree right in front of the building, uh, which is always, always presents a challenge because you're going to have the tree in the shot and, you don't, and we don't want the tree in the shot for the architects. So the, the, the tree has to be removed. There are ways to do that, um, which involve basically getting closer to the building. So say the tree is here, the building facade is here. You take your pictures from back here and then you walk in front of the tree so you're closer to the building and you take shots that way as well. And that generally, by doing that, you can use the software then to remove the trees. You can use masks and stuff inside of the software as well to remove the trees. But that's always always an issue, uh, getting clean shots because of trees or other stuff that's maybe up against the building or right next to the building that you don't want in the, in the final 3D model. So it's never a simple, straightforward thing of just going out and taking a photograph. There's always going to be little problems you can run into depending on what the object is you're photographing. Uh, Snuffy Girl says, uh, okay, so it's a live link. What do you mean, Snuffy Girl? Um, so, yeah, the, the, I really wish I could remember this other thing I wanted to tell you about photogrammetry, though. It was really important. <laughs> Can't remember what it was. I covered the, the big three. I can't remember the other one. I'm just keeping an eye on OBS over here to make sure everything's cool and copacetic. Um, it will come to me during the day. Anyway, uh, algorithmic. So yes, the plugin for 3D Studio Max here has not been released, so you, you can't use your SBZAR files directly in Max. Now, uh, Autodesk do ship a Substance plugin with Max. Where are we? Down here. But, as you can see, it doesn't do much. Uh, you can probably load a substance in, but the one that Algorithmic, the plugin Algorithmic make, is much more useful than this basic plugin that uh, Autodesks provide, because it allows you to automatically create texture material already hooked up for V-Ray, for Arnold, for whatever you're using. It's much, much more useful than this one that's built into Max. But that's not going to help us because we're not using substances directly. We're saving our bitmaps from Substance Painter. Oh, <laughs> between Max and Substance. Okay, snap a go. <sighs> yes, it's a live link. So that's that's the advantage of using uh, the plugin that Substance Algorithmic make for Max. They also make one for Maya and I believe a couple of other 3D programs as well. So not just Max. You can download them, download them for free from Algorithmic's website. Um, you don't need an account. Uh, you need an account, but you don't need to have purchased anything. They let you download the plugins for free. So it's not like you've got to buy Painter to get the plugin. You don't. Um, and they're live links. So basically you can just hook up the Substance SPZAR file and you can change all of the parameters on that substance live in Max to make any alterations to the look of the substance. So you don't actually have to save out the bitmaps. Now that, that's handy, but not for what we want to do here. Uh, I want to save the bitmaps out because I need them when I put this model into my 3D store to sell online. I need the bitmaps. 
Uh, so the problem we have at the moment, though, is if you're working in Max, and I'm sure I love 3D programs as well, and if we focus in here on this um, this piece at the top that we textured up last week, it's not really a good representation of what the texture looks like in Substance Painter. Now, we can fix that, though. Uh, Snappy Girl says, found that aperture at 100 works well and a faster shutter speed if you're hand-holding. Cool. Well, the faster shutter speed will probably help um, help with any shake you might have if, you, if you're doing holding it by hand, not using a tripod. The faster shutter speed will reduce the amount of um, distortion you have in the photo from any any shaking you might have of your hands while you take the photo. Does that make sense? Good tip. Uh, Snappy Girl says, uh, what was... Was that what you were thinking of for photogrammetry? No, that wasn't it. Uh, a tripod, obviously, is always a good idea if you can lug it around with you to get nice... St oh, yeah, actually, it was. That was actually what I wanted to talk about. It, it, exactly. You are exactly right, Sniper Girl. Um, because when I took the photographs for our uh, objects that I'm using here for this project, I didn't actually talk about it, but a couple of the shots came out a little blurry because, obviously, I'd moved the camera while I took the shot. So what I, what I did was I removed those from the folder that I'm using to create the photogrammetric object. You don't want any photographs that are blurred because that will throw out the calculation for the software to remake the object. So the first thing I do once I've finished doing all of my photographs, I bring them home, I load them up on my computer, I look through the folder of photographs and I remove any that are not, that are blurred. Uh, so that was the, that was what I wanted to talk about. So, yep, make sure any photographs you've taken that you plan on using in the software to make your 3D object uh, are removed. Any blurred ones are removed because it's just going to mess with the um, with the software otherwise. Uh, you may lose, you know, which is why you should always take a lot of shots anyway because one losing one or two blurred ones is not going to affect the overall composition of the object when you make it a 3D model anyway, as long as you've got coverage of, of areas, so... Thank you, Sniper Girl. That was exactly what I wanted to talk about. Thank God you're here. Um, so yes, remove any any blurred photos. So getting back to this though, we're working in Substance Painter. We're saving our bitmaps. We want to bring them in so we can texture up our model, but we've got the problem whereby this is not how it looks in Substance Painter. Uh, it's got, and and we want to texture our model up, and we've got to make sure we make so we're going to have to make adjustments to to the lightness and darkness of some textures so we get a nice overall blend together of the model. That's going to be hard for us if we can't see exactly what the texture is going to look like. So there's a couple of ways we can get around that. Now I'm going to show you how to do it in Max but I'm sure that there's a similar way to do it in Maya, Cinema 4D or even in Blender. Uh, the first, there, there, there are two ways. I'm going to show you the first way which is not the way I generally would recommend it. So at the moment we're just using a standard material that's not giving us what we what we need to see inside of um, Max. That's not how it looks in Substance. The first thing we can do is we can use a physical material. So a physical material was added in Max in 2017, I believe, Max 2017. This, we, we can use this, a physical material. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in the bitmaps that we're using for this spire, which are the ones we saved out from Substance Painter. So we want the colour. We want the metallic. We want the, we don't, I'll talk about the ambient occlusion in a minute. We want the uh, normal map. And we want the roughness map, which is this one, I believe. Yep. So, using a physical material, we can pump straight into the color map, the base color map. We can pump straight into the metal map. Obviously, the normal map goes to the bump map here. And the roughness map, we can send directly to roughness. Okay. So, using a physical material, that gives us an approximation, but I'll show you why I don't use this in a minute. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to just isolate that uh, top piece so that we can... So before I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it just to show you what I mean here. Uh, I'm going to hide that. So 
so we can just concentrate on these. I'm going to duplicate it one more time, so we've, we've got something to compare the, the two against. So I'm going to do it three times. There we go. Sniper Rico, good to see you, Sniper. I hope you're well. I hope you had a good weekend, buddy. We are um, just just for your benefit or anyone that's popped into the stream a little bit later. Um, I'm doing really well. Yeah, no, busy working away as usual at the studio. <laughs> but it's good. I enjoy it. But I've been working over the weekend, so that's okay. Easter soon, and I'm taking a week off over Easter, so I'll have a bit of a recharge then. But I'm doing well apart from that. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope everything's going well for you too. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about about being able to see our, our textures in Max like they are in Substance Painter. Uh, now, uh, there are a couple of shaders we can use for that. And Sniper Echo says, I actually didn't realise it was Monday. <laughs> Guess the weekend passed without me noticing. Well, is that good or bad? You've been working hard, obviously. Yes, it's Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. Or Tuesday if you're in, the, in, in Australia or in this part of the world. But we don't talk about that because it confuses you guys. Because I tell you I stream on a Monday and Tuesday and that's the days. But it's really Tuesday and Wednesday for me. <laughs> uh, so yes, physical material. So this one, this one has our original material using a standard shader. Not a good approximation of what we see in our Substance Painter. Let's assign the uh, physical material here to the, the middle one. Now I'm just going to make sure I turn on show shaded and show realistic. I'm going to assign that material. And now you can see what we get with the physical material. We're getting a bit better of an approximation, like we're getting the um, the glossiness, although it's too glossy. That need, would need to be knocked back by using another map, which you'd have to export out of Substance Painter to knock into... Uh, into the could be something to do with the coding I think or the scattering map Sniper Echo says yeah got a six week deadline to make not sure I can come close to completing it in that time oh, just take it a day at a time don't stress I know it's easier said than done um, deadlines are always stressful all you can do is do your best, and if you miss the deadline, you miss the deadline. There's not much you can do about that. But and believe me, working in the industry for a while, deadlines are missed constantly. It's not good because generally studios get paid <laughs> based on the deadline, uh, so it can cause problems if you miss the deadline. But there are times when you just will because that's the nature of the beast. You, you can't foresee all the problems you're going to have to to make something ahead of time. So. Uh, Studios will miss deadlines. It's, it's not an unusual thing. But it can affect, uh, like I said, payments, because payment they can be publishers and stuff can withhold payments unless until the deadline is met. Which is fair enough. You sign a contract saying I'm gonna have it ready for you by this date, and uh, and they say fine, you have it ready by that date and we'll pay you on this date. So if you miss that date, then that can cause issues. But there are times where you just can't help it. So try not to stress, buddy. Uh, so yes, uh, using a physical material is a good way to get an approximation, but that's still not really how it's supposed to look. Because because of a couple of things, one the glossiness, and the other one is the fact that Substance Painter uses an ambient occlusion map. And you'll notice here in the, in the physical material, there is nowhere to plug in an ambient occlusion map. Uh, and that's because this physical material is meant for people that use uh, rendering programs like V-Ray or Arnold. Uh, in a rendering program, you generally don't pump, you, you don't include an ambient occlusion map. If you're doing um, professional renderings, you don't generally mix an, an ambient occlusion map into your texture map because that's what the rendering program does automatically. It calculates ambient occlusion as part of the render. So that's the reason it's missing here in the physical material. Galen, it's good to see you, Galen. How are you? Uh, Galen says, figured out my figured out my tardiness issue notifications got turned up oh no i've heard that a few from a few people actually on twitch that um the notifications are switched off 
So double check that, people. If you if you're expecting notifications from streamers, it, there's a bit of a bug in Twitch's back end, I think, that does that stops them, turns them off, even though you might have them turned on. But it's good to see you, Galen. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you're well. I know you had a bit of a head cold last time I spoke to you. Tuatara, good to see you, Tuatara. How are you? Afternoon to you. Well, it's actually morning for me, but um, afternoon to you too, Tuatara. I hope you're well. I hope you had a good weekend. It's good to see you. And just to, again, reminding people, if you're viewing me in the Asian region, like Australia, New Zealand, this part of the world, uh, because Daylight Savings has finished in Australia now, my stream starts an hour earlier for you guys. It's always 5 p.m. Pacific in the US. That never changes. So I, I change my time in my time zone to match you guys in the US because, you know, you're the most important people on the planet, aren't you? All you American, all my American friends. <laughs> Paolo, it's good to see you, Paolo. How are you? I hope you had a good weekend. Um, <laughs> I'll just call you Paolo if that's okay. <laughs> Because I'm terrible with usernames, the guys will tell you. Paolo Del Cabo? Oh, Paolo. <laughs> it's good to see you, Paolo. Thanks for popping in and saying hi. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, Tuatara says, all well here, good to hear. And Galen says, about time someone admitted that. <laughs> uh, so yes, what are we talking about? Yes, we're talking about this physical material. Um, the physical material was really created for people that use renderers like V-Ray, like uh, Arnold, or, or any, any of those professional rendering renderers. And that's why there is no ambient occlusion map slot. Um, so that's the reason, one of the reasons why the, the, um, the model is not really looking the way here like it should, like it did inside of Substance Painter. Sniper Echo says, the only time I include an ambient occlusion map is in UE4 when I can't bake light data. Uh, that way I can use it as a sort of mask for custom shadows and dirt building areas. I use I use it in UE4 as well. Um, but because I'm going to be taking this into, um, into substance, into a view, to do the beauty renders. Thank you, Paolo, for the follow. I do appreciate it when you guys and girls follow me on Twitch. So thank you very much, Paolo for following the channel. Uh, remember to join the Discord too, Paolo, if you're into Discord. Um, only subs can post links in Twitch chat, but everyone can post links on my Discord server. There's a gallery section. There are general chat sections. Everybody's very helpful, very friendly. You should join the Discord server. You can do that by clicking that link. Uh, remember too, guys, you don't have to install the Discord app, although it is a very good app. You can uh, access the Discord through your web browser. So, I know Sniper Girl does that. Oh, you use dirt in V-Ray? Yes, well, you can use the dirt um, material in V-Ray if you want to uh, dirt, dirty up your material in one pass. Yes, that, that's perfectly true, Paolo. That, that's the way to do it in V-Ray. Uh, but that's that's the reason why the physical material in Max does not include an ambient occlusion, occlusion slot, uh, blah, slot. Because generally you don't add ambient occlusion to a, a V-Ray render or any, any professional render. You do... I, I use them inside of UE4. Um, in my materials because they can add a little bit more interest to the material inside of the editor. Uh, and I also will be using them inside of Eon View, which we're going to be taking this model into to do beauty renders. Because there's a slot inside of Eon View where you uh, actually add your ambient occlusion map. So I'm going to be doing that. So I need the ambient occlusion for that as well. Um, and I'm probably also going to include it in this model when I sell it on my 3D stores just in case people do want to use it. Maybe they want to bring that model into a game engine so they'll have the ambient occlusion map. Um, but what I'm probably going to do for the, for the model for the for sale is I'm going to have a version that uses standard materials for people that don't use a V-Ray and I'll have also a version for V-Ray already set up as far as materials go. It's a bit of extra work for me because it means I have to set up the model using standard materials and then reset up the textures using V-Ray materials but it, if people are buying the model they're going to expect that. So. Uh, Sniper says, yeah, I believe there's a way to pre-render ambient occlusion maps in UE4 before switching to fully dynamic lights. Not figured that out yet, though. And, of course, there is that... The, the, uh, UE, UE, Unreal Engine 4.22 was released just a week or so ago. 
and that has the new pipeline for real-time ray tracing as well and I think they might ha handle ambient occlusion a little bit differently if you're using that pipeline as well. You can really only use that at the moment uh, if you're using an RTX card. Uh, although NVIDIA are going to be releasing a driver in, a, in April, so soon, presumably, that will allow GTX cards in the 10 series and higher to use uh, that pipeline as well. So you'll be able to turn on real-time ray tracing. It's not you, you won't be able to play games using it because it, it lacks the hardware that, uh, G, that RTX cards have. But if you're a developer, it, would, it will at least allow you to develop, say, in UE4 using the RTX pipeline on a GTX card, which will be really helpful for a lot of people because um, not everyone wants to, to update their graphics card to an RTX card if they've got a good GTX card like me. I have a 1080 Ti. I'm not going to be upgrading to a 2080 or 2080 Ti uh, RTX version. So, uh, Galen says, ever thought about using DX DDS formats for materials and maps? Uh, I, I used to use them all the time back in the day when graphics cards didn't have a lot of memory. They're still valid to use. Um, if you're using UE4 though, I probably wouldn't recommend using DDS simply because when you package your game using UE4, the engine itself compresses the textures. So it, it's, sort of, it's almost like, say you bring a target texture into UE4, then you package your game up to sell it. Uh, when the engine makes those packages, it compresses that texture anyway into some, I'm, I'm not sure what format it uses. But it does compression, so I don't. There's no. I don't think there's as much benefit now to use DDS as there used to be. Not saying you can't though, because DDS is still very good. Uh, it does good compression. It's not too bad. It, it's lousy, meaning you will lose some information, but um, it can reduce file sizes dramatically. So yes, DDS is, is still valid, still useful, but do bear in mind that if you're making a game, say in UE4, probably the same in Unity. As soon as you package up and, and save out that uh, game file, the engine is going to be compressing those textures into some compressed format anyway. So, uh, so I used to use DDS so quite a bit. I used, there was a plugin for Photoshop you could download that uh, could save out DDS files. You can still download it, I think. It's, it's an NVIDIA plugin from memory. It hasn't been updated since like 2007, but uh, it's still useful. You can still use it. Um, so yes, we were talking, we are talking about textures. So that's the reason the physical material does not have ambient occlusion. Generally, you don't use it for a renderer. The rendering engine will create the ambient occlusion as part of the render automatically. Uh, Tuatara says, just added some new material to the Discord gallery. Oh, let's have a look. Okay, I'm in the gallery. Oh, nice. What you've been working on. Very nice. Let's have a look here at Tuatara stuff. I'll come back to this in two seconds, guys. I like to look at the work you guys post, so that's the whole reason. Um, one of the reasons I'm on Twitch is to encourage you guys to do 3D. If you, By the way, if you want to know more about me, go to phildoes3d.com. That's my website you see here. You can read up on me there and um, find out who I am and what I do. This is Tuatara's work. Very nice. I'm just going to copy the other links and the other link, and then we can check them out in a bit more detail. Very nice. Love it. Now, is this your design? Are you working from concept art to Atara? Very nice, though. Sort of like, is it a Roman? character, I'm assuming, with the headdress. My only critique might be that you're maybe maybe the um, the normal or you, your bump here is a bit too bumpy, but it could be the character. It depends on what sort of character it is, I guess. I just just to me it looks like the um, like the paws are a little bit too the depth on them is a bit too much. It could be the lighting. Uh, but the modeling is beautiful. I love it. I love the detail you've got in here on in the character's face as well. The neck, the neck looks great. I love that. Creepy, creepy eyes. Um, Galen says, I've reverse engineered a few DDS files in my time. Do you get maps from game assets? Ooh. I don't know. You be, be careful, Galen. Game assets are probably copyrighted. Uh, Tuatara says, no concept art, just playing. Uh, yeah, the pause is something 
new using XYZ Alphas. Okay. Yeah, it's, I'm not familiar with XYZ Alphas. I'll have to look into that. Um, Galen says, the only thing I see is the veins on the cheeks are symmetric. He's talking about here. Which is, I didn't notice actually, Galen, initially. So you've got a keen eye there, dude. Uh, but I love the model. I love the um, the sculpting in, in the face, the detailing in the face. And it, it's a nice looking model as well. He looks like he could go on a bit of a diet, I think. But it looks great. I love the modeling work. You've done a good job. Uh, Paolo says you can see your mesh. I think he might mean in this shot here. He's talking about the face here. Uh, a smooth, uh, like if he brought it into max, just throw a turbo smooth over the top of that and never get rid of that immediately. Yeah, it's not just asking XYZ Alphas. I'm not familiar with them either. I haven't heard of them. <laughs> so I'm going to have to look that up. Always good when I hear about something I'm not familiar with. Uh, super clean, you like it? Yep, Galen, I like it as well. It looks very nice. And like I said, I like the sculpting detail that you've got in the face, particularly the neck. I love the neck. I love it. You, well, I should say the jowl, the chin, because he's got no neck. <laughs> His jowl, you know, you know, heavyweight people, they can lose their neck. They just tend to have a head. <laughs> uh, Paolo's asking how many poly counts it has. Juatara says lots of dual polarized skin textures. Have a look at texturing.xyz. I'll check that out after the stream. I'm always interested in learning about new things that I'm not familiar with. Part of the fun of 3D. One of the things I love about 3D is learning new stuff. Uh, Scanlon says it's a jail or a, a goiter. Yes. Well, and you've sculpted it up very nicely. Really nice work to Tara. I love it. Love it. Love it. Texturing is coming up very nicely as well. It's a, a lot more difficult actually to do a skin shader than people give give credit to. It's really hard to actually get human skin to look right. Uh, I don't do characters, so I don't have to be bothered with it, but a, a few of my friends who are character artists, I know that they put a lot of work into doing their skin to get skin to look correct with uh, subsurface scattering and all that sort of stuff. And you've done a very nice job. Very nice indeed. And thank you for sharing it. Do you remember if you've got anything, guys and girls, you want me to show on stream? Feel free to pop into the Discord and post links in the gallery section. If you don't want me to show it on stream, just let me know and I won't. Because I know some people aren't comfortable uh, having their work shown live on Twitch. Which I get, that's all, all good. So, just to remember that. If you don't want me to show it, I won't show it. You're quite welcome. I love the work. I love looking at the stuff you guys are doing. And um, like I said, I really like the um, this model. I love the sculpting work. You've done a great job. And those eyes are so creepy. Black eyes. <laughs> reminds me of... Uh, did you guys ever watch a show called Supernatural? It reminds me of Supernatural because all the demons have these black eyes. Uh, but yep, great, great work. Love it. Sniper Rica says, I need to figure out how to do a good skin shader. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's really much more difficult than people give it credit give, give credit to making skin look good. It's quite 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 a talent. Anyway, let's get back to talking about our shaders. Just making sure I've caught up with everything in Discord. And Nightbot spamming my links as usual. <laughs> Uh, so, Tuatara says, uh, have a look at Chris Costa, Snipe to Sniper Echo. So yes, that's the reason the physical material does not have an ambient occlusion shot. Slot, not shot, slot. Uh, the V-Ray material also does not have ambient occlusion. So, that's not going to help us for what we want. 
because like I said, this is not really showing us what it looks like inside of Substance Painter. There is one other way we can do it, and this is the way I recommend you do it if you are using Substance Painter to make your models. Say you're using 3D Studio Max to show them as you're working on it. Do it this way. Um, so I'm not going to, I won't delete the physical material because I want to show you a comparison between the right way to do it. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drag in a standard material. I'm going to right click that. I'm going to change the material type to a, if I can find it, to a DirectX shader. It's going to ask me if I want to keep the old material as a submaterial. I don't. I want to discard it. Now, I don't need this part anymore. I'm only interested in this little bit here. So I'm going to remove that and double click this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in our texture maps again. So, uh, so the first thing I need to do here is change it from an HLSL file to an interactive file. Okay, so DirectX shader and then change the, the shader mode from HLSL to interactive. It used to be called Stingray. Stingray was Max's Autodesk's game engine. Um, but they've changed it now, at least in 2020. It's just called Interactive. That's what you want. Galen says, I saw a tutorial for it, and basically it had three shaders for the deep scatter, mid scatter, and surface. Um, so yes, DirectX shader, changing it to Interactive mode. Now we can start bringing in our... Um, our maps. So the first thing I'm going to bring in is the color map. We're back in our dome spire. Now there are a couple of things you have to be aware of here. When you select your color map, because Max works in a gamma of 2.2, Substance Painter works in a gamma of 1. Eon View, if you're doing renders in that program, also uses a gamma of 1. So you have to change from Automatic Recommended to Override and set it to 1. Uh, let me just get rid of my camera actually so you can see that. So it, normally when you bring a, a texture map into Max, it comes in as automatic. You want to change it to override and let it sit, be, have it set to one. Okay, so bring in our color map. You see, you'll notice with the DirectX shader, you don't hook your things in. You, you work with your maps here inside of the actual details for the shader itself. Euro, good to see you, Euro. How are you? Hope you're well. Did you have a good weekend, Euro? It's good to see you. Uh, so yes, make sure that if you're working with the DirectX shader, you don't pump your um, your materials in like you do with any other shader. It's all done through here. So we brought the color map in. The next thing we want to bring in is the normal map. Again, making sure you override down there to one. Uh, we want to bring in the metallic map. All, all making sure all of these maps are overridden to a one, a gamma of one. Uh, the roughness map, which is this one. And finally, the ambient occlusion map. See, this one actually has a space for ambient occlusion. This is a direct deck shader. It's meant for real time rendering. So it's made for game engines. But we can use it because we need to see what our texture will look like that we created in Substance Painter. So I'm going to bring in the ambient occlusion map, which is this one here. Making sure I always override to gamma of one. Okay. Now the other important thing, because you don't see any preview here, what the, the thing is looks like, like we do here. Uh, we have to make sure we name them correctly. Otherwise, every material is just going to be this gray color. You're not going to know which one is which. So naming them is really important. FS Vault, it's good to see you, FS Vault. I'm doing well, thanks for asking. I was working over the weekend and I have been for the last month or two, but it's all good. I uh, hope you're well. Hope you had a good weekend, FS Vault. Uh, Euro says, I just woke up, it's almost 2 a.m. Quiet weekend, quiet is good. Well, that's good. It's always nice to have a quiet weekend too. You wake up, it's almost, you wake up at 2 a.m. Why? 
If it was 2 a.m., I'd be back in bed. I'd be sleeping. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 particularly now it's getting cooler in Melbourne. I don't like getting out of bed when it's cold. Uh, so, it's, yeah, it's really important to name these shaders if you're going to be using them because they're, they're not going to give you a preview of what they actually are. I'm, I'm just going to call this one what the name of the object is, which is Dome Spire, not 01, because we made a copy. Uh, so I'm just going to call it Dome Spire, which is what the um, the object is. So here, Dome Spire, I, I like to go underscore TEX for text, or actually MAT for material. There we go. Uh, so let's assign that now to the third one here. Now, I'm just wondering why I'm not... So oh, okay, a couple of other things to be aware of. Uh, you must also make sure that these parameters up here are set to 1. So at the moment we're not using the normal map because it's set at 0, so I'm going to change that to a 1. We're not using the colour map, let's change that to a 1, so we do. Uh, the same with the metallic map. They all, they all come turned off. You've got to turn them on by setting them to 1. Uh, we're going to use the roughness map. Well, we don't have an emissive map, but we're going to use the ambient occlusion map. So set that to 1. Okay. And if, if you want a closer look at what this is actually doing, this shader is doing, you can open the shader effects, which is this dialog here. And this is a typical node-based dialog. So this is what the actual DirectX shader is doing behind the scenes sort of thing. Uh, and you, of course you can come in here and you can change any of these values on any of these nodes if you want. If you want to make any alterations in the node, you, you can do that in here. So it's a lot like um, um, Unreal's node editor. Pretty much they all work the same way. This is our final texture over here, and these are our nodes that are pumped in to get to our final texture. So you can follow your node back to your base color here and make any changes you want on your base color. Or add any new nodes that you want here. Okay. This, the, the, these are areas of Max that a lot of people don't really know about, they haven't used. Most people that use Max in their daily driver, unless they're doing something specific, they won't probably have used the shader node or the DirectX shader. Uh, Euro says, my sleep schedule is irregular at best. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I used to be like that. Uh, so I, used to, I find that I, I do my best work in the early hours of the morning, which is like when everybody else is asleep, even though I... When living alone, you can. I still would work early hours in the morning because it's nice and quiet. There's no cars, you can't hear anything, everybody's asleep, most people anyway. So I used to find I used to like doing work between like 12 and 3. <laughs> um, so I get it. FS Vault says I'm the same way, and Sniper says, yeah, same. I know, it's weird. I like working early hours of the morning. Throw the tunes on and start jamming. Well, that's true. I generally don't work to music while I'm working at home. When I'm working in the studio, I always have my headphones on. Uh, Antisocial that I am. Because uh, I like to listen to music while I work. If I'm in the studio. Funnily enough, though, well, actually, that's probably not true. Because if I'm working at home, I generally have the music channel on the TV going. So I guess I listen to music that way, too. But FS Vault says, too bad, I wake up at 1 p.m. <laughs> if you're working till, you know, 3 a.m., then, you know, you're going to be sleeping in till 1 p.m. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, the, you can make, make any changes in the node here, in the shade, uh, in the uh, shader FX. So now that we've turned those on, but you see, we don't have any, any indication of what that texture is, so it's really important to name it. But now, if I turn the map seams off here, this is what it looks like in Substance Painter. So now we have a proper representation of what the texture is supposed to look like. And you see how different it is to these other two. So this one was just using a standard shader. This one was using a physical shader, physical material shader. And this one is using a DirectX shader. 
And this one is showing us the way, a true indication of how it looked in Substance Painter. Okay. Now the reason, one of the main reasons that is, is because no, there's no ambient occlusion being shown here. And the ambient occlusion does tend to texture, to darken the texture up a bit. But you'll notice to the reflection, the reflection is correct here, it's incorrect here, it's too reflective. Whereas on this one, the reflection is correct. There's a little bit of reflection, but not like we see here. Like we can see the reflection on the edge here, there's none on this one. So, yep, if you want to get your textures to look exactly like they do in Algorithmic Substance Painter, use the DirectX shader inside of 3D Studio Max. Uh, unless you're using an SBZAR file, in which case you use the plugin that Algorithmic created for Max. Okay. So let's just delete those. I just wanted to talk about that because I know it's something that a lot of people would maybe wonder about, wonder how they can get their substances, their texture paints to look right. I'm just going to assign that to the, um, to that spire, now that we have the correct texture for it. Uh, we need to do the same thing here with this one. This one is just using a standard shader. Let's change that over to a DirectX shader as well. Uh, but what I'm going to do here so I don't get completely lost, I'm going to remove this physical shader because we're not using it. I only used it as an example. I'm going to move this shader up next to this one. So I'm going to still be creating a standard shader. And I'm going to move the DirectX version of that next to it so I know what that shader is. Uh, but let's do the same thing for this one now, which is the uh, cement part. So standard, change material type to DirectX, and discard the old one, delete the old one. Uh, change it to interactive and let's start loading in our normal map, which is going to be in this folder. Uh, the color map. Oh, hang on, just let me redo those because even I just forgot there. We must make sure we set the override the gamma to one. The setting could hardly be more perfect. Okay, that one, the color map. Because if you don't, it's not going to look correct. The metallic map it should be this one, yep. The roughness map, which should be this one. And the ambient occlusion it should be this one. Again, we're going to make sure we turn them on. So number, change it to one for the normal map. One for the color map. The metallic. The roughness and the ambient occlusion. Uh, and what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to turn the roughness, it, it defaults to 0 0.33. I'm just going to set that back to 0. I'm going to do that on both of these actually. Because we're using a roughness map, we don't need to specify a value. Okay, change those, change the interactive. We just may, need to make sure we name it correctly. So we're going to be calling it uh, Spire Base Small. underscore map for material and let's assign that okay so again now the, the texture map looks like it does in Mar in uh, substance painter okay so uh, let's start continuing our texturing just be but before I send this one over to substance what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the uh, small one that we made last week in Substance Painter, which will be here, which will be here, which will be uh, this one. Uh, what I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a smart material so I don't have to keep adding the same things over and over again for the different cement dome pieces. Uh, Euro says I have music playing to just to keep focus, uh, as good beat is essential. And, uh, I can't deny that, I like a good beat as well. 
In fact, this is where my music is playing. It's going to change those to large. If his box says game soundtracks are awesome for that, uh, Yuri says minimal techno and lo fi lo trip hop are my position to each their own though. If his box says uh, are you midway through painting everything or are you uh, assembling everything now? I am midway through painting everything. If it's well, we finished the modeling stage, now we're onto the texturing stage. So what I want to do here with this is I want to create a smart material. So the first thing I need to do, if I can remember how to do this, is add a folder. And we're going to call this one Temple. We'll call it Temple Rings. I'm going to remove this bottom layer because I forgot to do that. That's just a blank layer that is automatically created. I'm going to move these into that folder. And I'm going to create a smart material. Uh, and it automatically creates it for me. You can see it just here. Hopefully, yep. Yeah. All right, so I can close down Substance Painter now and we can move on. I'm just going to discard those. Oh, actually, I'll save those changes. Why not? So let's jump back into Max. So we have our model here we're texturing up. We have our top ring. Let's texture up this ring now. So we've already done all the UV mapping. So we can just jump straight into texturing. Sniper says, any of you guys using Max 19, 2019? I was using 2018 up until the new version was released. By the way, that DirectX shader I just showed you, I'm using Max 2020, but it's in Max 2018, 19, 17 as well, I think. Episvolt says, no, I use Blender now. Sniper Echo generally uses Blender too. I think he's just doing a project at the moment where he needs some Max stuff. Snap says, still takes ages to open, but seems like the user interface is a little faster and not as much redrawing. I've noticed that with Max 2020 coming from Max 2018. Uh, the interface is a little bit snappier. The rotation like around your, of your model and stuff is a little bit snappier. Um, so, uh, and they have mentioned that they did make some improvements to the user interface between 2018 and 2019 and 2020. So every release they improve things, make them a bit, bit faster. Here it says I installed 20 the other day. The edit poly mode switch is still super laggy. He's talking about over here, I'm assuming, in the modifier. Uh, sorry, you're in 20. <coughs> I'm using Max 2020 Sniper Echo. As you can see up here, you might not be able to read it because I'm using uh, such a high res screen, but yeah, Max 2020. Uh, Euro says, yeah, Vert Edge face switch, yep. It is faster than it used to be though, Euro. I mean, it is a bit laggy still, but it's faster than it used to be. Like, compared to 2016, it's faster. At least I think it is, unless it's just a placebo. I'm imagining it. Um, but they do try. They try and speed the interface up. Although I've noticed Max 2020 is a bit slower to actually boot up than Max 2018. The initial time, you know, when you first load the program up, it seems a little bit slower for some reason actually start. <laughs> don't know why that is. Uh, FS Vault says, I don't want to sidetrack you, Phil. That's okay, but, oh, but was that dome roof tile texture done with designer? It's a dome roof tile texture. Oh, this? No, this is photogrammetry. So the any, anything already textured up here is photogrammetry that I've, I've... So I went out, took photographs, and could turn that into a 3D model. Uh, this is not the original way the original dome looked because we've made some changes. Uh, that was part of what I was talking about when I was doing the photogrammetry section. How you can take a, a, an object that, that's photogrammetry and you can alter it make, to make it look some, to, to create something different from that photogram from that object, so it doesn't look exactly like the original. Uh, Euro says the viewport is much smoother. I noticed the edit poly switch lag a few versions back and they've never addressed it. I'm due for a format soon, so we'll see if that rectifies it. A good format, actually, I noticed 
when I updated my machine and reinstalled Windows Fresh, it's amazing just how snappy Windows can feel with Fresh install. So I'm, I'm a, a big uh, advocate of fresh, freshly installing Windows. I know it's a pain because you've got to reinstall all your software. Um, I don't suggest you do it every three to six months like some people do, uh, but it certainly does help make everything feel snappier and fresher. Uh, FS Vault says, wow, it looks awesome. Well, thank you, FS Vault. Yes, no, these these are actually photo, photogrammetry. So the textures you we see here, uh, that was actually a photograph of a statue I took. Uh, but this statue was like my head came up to here. It's, it's huge. And I'm repurposing it to make something new. Uh, the same with the uh, terrace here, with the, the, the dome. I'm re I've re reimagined it into something new, remodeled it into something new. So I'm just taking bits and pieces to create a new object. Because uh, that's what I was getting back to with you guys when you were saying people are worried that AI is going to take their job. Like people in 3D are saying, well, photogrammetry, who needs 3D artists anymore? Well, they still need you because uh, photogrammetry can't be creative. AI can't be creative. Um, at least not yet. So they still need your creative brain to make stuff look good. Uh, and a good example is this model here because this takes photogrammetry and alters it to make something completely different and new. So if you're worried about not having work in 3D because, you know, all you have to do is take a photograph of a mailbox and you've got a mailbox. Well, that might be true, but uh, you can always use your creativity to create something new from that photogrammetry model, which is what we've done here. And you'll always be employable that way. FS Bolt says, uh, I can just imagine a mini fill in the scene. <laughs> we could scan me and put me in there. Um, so let us send this over to Substance Painter. Now again, I'm using a free plugin that you can download from Substance to send stuff between Max and uh, Substance Painter. There's a plugin for um, Maya. I think there's a plugin for Blender as well. I'm using the max one. So I've selected that uh, ring at the top. Let's send that over to Substance Painter. It's just going to ask me here first what if I want to make any changes to the FBX geometry. I don't. I'm just going to leave it at standard Autodesk Media Ent Entertainment. The default basically will work for what we want. And it will load up Substance. It will create a new project and load in my model. So I don't have to bother exporting and importing and all that sort of stuff. I'm just again going to change this to large. Uh, now we already we created that smart material, so let's use it. Let's jump into smart materials, find where it saved it out, which is this one here, temple rings. I'm just going to drag it on top, and we've already got our smart material ready to go to match the one above it, the one the, the smaller ring that we had. So I really don't need to do anything, but. I do need to bake my mesh so I can get my curvature maps. So I'm just going to use the uh, use the low poly as the high poly and bake out all of those textures. That will allow the tech, the smart material to actually apply to the object correctly, as you can see there. And now it looks identical to the one above it inside of Max. See how quick and easy that was. Let's export our textures. I'm going to export this as a as a 2K texture, I think, not a 4K, a 2K. Alrighty, let's just save that project in case we want to come back in the future at any stage and close down that and close down that. And let's set up our shader. First thing I'm going to do is use a standard shader just so it will remind me exactly what this uh, what the DirectX shader will be. So the bitmap. And this one. Okay, I didn't rename the actual model before it exported it, so it's just called it Tube. I may have to come back and rename that so we don't get confused and later on. Okay, so, uh, but I don't want to use this. I'm only doing this to show, to remind me what my DirectX shader is going to be. 
So same thing, change material type, we're changing it to DirectX. Discarding the old one. Changing it to interactive mode. Let's bring in the normal map. And the color map. Next one is the metallic map. And the roughness map. And finally the ambient occlusion. I know it looks white there, but there is a, uh, the ambient occlusion map is very light. Okay, do we have it selected? We do, so let's assign our shader. Actually, before we do that, make sure we turn it, turn them on. So use the normal map, use the color map, metallic map, roughness map, and ambient occlusion. Now we can assign it. We can zoom in here. Now a couple of these, these are probably ones I'm gonna take into Mari and overpaint. Uh, but once we've finished uh, texturing up all the rest of it, I'll do that. Uh, the other thing I don't, don't actually quite like is I, I think that the um, that it's a little bit too dark. The actual material itself, but we'll come we'll look at that once we texture up a bit a few more pieces. Uh, so the same thing here. Let's we I wonder if we should make something different here. Let's have a look. Let's send this one over to Substance Painter. Uh, I just want to make sure I name these correctly. So instead of tube, this one was called Spire Base Small. We'll call this the other one Spire Base Large. And LG for large. And make sure in my materials that I name this DirectX shader. Underscore map. Okay. Uh, and the other thing I just want to do here, actually, I won't do that. It's okay. So let us send this one over to Substance Painter. We're going to call this one uh, Dome Ring Upper. Dome Ring Upper. Let's send that over to Substance Painter. All right. Now we have to decide whether we want, close that, whether we want to use the same texture if I want to use something different. I'm just going to pull out here and look at the dome from a bit of a distance to judge what I want to do. Uh, actually, let's see if we can make something a little bit different. So the first thing we need to do is bake out our curvature and all that goodness. Um, actually, just want to check something here as well. Uh, I want to bake them out a little bit higher res than that. So I'm going to bake them out in uh, in 2K. Alright. Let's go through our substances here and see if there's anything different we might be able to use. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also just going to delete this layer here. That's just a blank layer that Substance creates when we make a new project. Um, let's have a look at what this is. I'm just going to change the scaling mode. Yeah, I didn't think we could use this. I just wanted to see if it was usable or not. It's not, unfortunately. It's okay. Mm. 
that's the great thing about substance. We can throw these things down and uh, and remove them really quickly if they don't work. Concrete, concrete, concrete. I didn't think, again, this one I didn't think would work either. But it doesn't have to try. No, I don't like that. No, I don't like that either. We may just go back to our smart material and make make some interesting changes in an overpainted Mari later on, I think. I think that might be the best way to go. Um, I'm just going to quickly look through these sub substances to see if there is anything else interesting. Uh, we really should check out Alchemist 2 at some stage on stream, see if we can make some interesting substances through Alchemist. Although it is still in beta substance, Alchemist. But I'd like to play around with it. I don't get much of a chance during the day with the studio, so one of the few times I can get some free time to play with it is when I'm on stream with you guys. Uh, because we tend to use B-Ray materials, we don't use substances. Not that you can't. Substances are still good uh, if you're doing V-Ray renders, but the studio, we tend to use... We have a library of V-Ray materials we use for our client, uh, our client work, so... We tend to stick to what we know. I don't really see anything else here that might be good. Curious what this one is. Okay. No, I think we'll we'll go back to our smart material. And temple rings. I might just make a couple of alterations on this one though, because it's a larger ring, so we probably want to increase the tiling a little bit. Oh. Von Buki, Von Buki, it's good to see you. How are you? I says, a trillion and one shaders, <laughs> and I just have nothing to wear. I know, it's like that, isn't it? There's so many shaders that you can download from Substance Database. It gets a bit like that. Okay, uh, I'm just going to, um, it's good to see you though, Bambuki. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. And I'm, I'm missing my follows, so I want to thank, um, Kiwis, is it? Kiw? Kiw? K-I-W. Thank you for following the channel, and uh, Grassroots, thank you also for following the channel on, uh, on Build Us 3D on Twitch. I do appreciate it, guys. Von Buki, good. I'm glad I pronounced it correctly because the guys and girls in chat, will t my regulars will tell you I'm terrible with your usernames. I am terrible, terrible. I do try, but I'm, yeah, between my brain and my mouth, I'm terrible. Sniper Girl says, uh, hi again, just got back from the store. I didn't even know you'd gone, Sniper Girl. Didn't even know you'd gone. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to jump in here and... Um, just make a couple of changes, I think, to the scaling. I'm just, I'm just turning off the moss at the top here to jump into, into the cement, which is this one. And I'm just going to play with the scale a little bit. Because it's a bigger piece of um, cement, we need to push the scale up a little. Sniper Girl says... <laughs> So let's move up to the next texture, turn that on. This is like a stucco, over, an overpaint, like um, like the cement has been stuccoed and then some of the stucco is warm. 
I uh, don't know whether we really need to change the scale too much on this one. Uh, let's move back up to the moss. I'm just going to pull up on the scale of the moss a little bit. Nothing dramatic, just a little bit. Um, concrete, plaster, moss. I'm also turning off the height information for the moss. I'm going to turn off the, uh, the, uh, the normal as well. And generally with these textures, I, if I start layering down a lot of textures, I only work with the height information from the base texture and I turn off the height information generally on the other two. You see, I've turned that one off. I'll turn off the roughness as well. Von Buki says, My name was manufactured by a high-end branding company to be uh, pronounced perfectly by anyone who can read a pizza menu. <laughs> uh, Sniper Girl says, Are you working on anything to Sniper Echo? Sniper's always working on something. Um, do remember guys and girls to join the Phil Dust 3D Discord server if you want. Uh, there's a really helpful friendly group of people on Discord apart from Sniper Girl. No, she's very nice as well. Um, so if you have any problems you can always jump on Discord and ask someone. I jump into Discord when I'm not streaming so you can contact me that way or through Twitter uh, at Phil Dust 3D. Um, or you can post images and stuff in the gallery. So I encourage you guys and girls to join the Discord. You can just click that link I popped in Twitch chat. <laughs> Sniper says, yep, sure I'm working on something so much you missed over the weekend. Sniper Girl says, I'm really an evil demon, don't listen to film. <laughs> She's not, she's very nice. Smurper says, lies, he's never on Discord. Oh, well, that's not true either. Um, Bonbuki says, I'm looking at at notch at the moment and wondering where the hell I would start to learn using it. I'm not familiar with notch. I'm not familiar with that one, Von Boogie. A sniper echo says, like I genuinely was shocked when I got the alert for this stream. <laughs> Alrighty. I think that that should be fine. Let us export our textures. Uh, again, I'm going to export them as in fact, these ones I'm going to export as a 4K texture because I may end up overpainting in Mari, so I want a good texture resolution. Uh, again, this is not going into a game. This model is, is a model I'm going to sell on my 3D store, so it's meant to be rendered inside of a rendering program, not put inside of a game engine. But the beauty of Substance Painter here is we can knock the texture resolution back easily just by re reloading the arm. Um, the project and re-exporting our textures, so. Uh, Bombuki says it's what's used for large-scale live feedback motion graphics and all sorts of stuff. Oh, okay. What? Live feedback motion graphics? Oh, um, again, yeah, not familiar with it, but then I don't do a lot of live uh, feedback motion graphics work. <laughs> it does sound interesting, Smurfery, I agree. Uh, let's just do a save here of this project in case we do want to come back and make any changes. Now we can close down Substance Painter, jump back into Max. And we can set up our shader. And so again, starting with the standard shader so I know what it's going to be. This is a visual reminder for me. Uh, Dome Spire Upper, is that the one? Yes, because we re renamed it, so it created the right folder name. It's going to pull in the uh, the diffuse texture for that. And now we're going to set up our DirectX shader. Okay, let's remove that because we don't need it. Sniper, oh, hang on, let me go. Bombuki says, can't make stuff like this. I tell you guys, that's one of the reasons I'm on Twitch. Anyone can do 3D. It just takes a bit of practice. You'll get better the more you do it. It's not hard. It's, it's something everybody can do. I encourage you all to try. You don't have to spend money on a 3D program. Blender is completely free. 
if you want to use Max or Maya and you're a student or you have a student email address, they give you a three year license for free to use the software. So no excuses. Do 3D. It's fun. Just practice. Practice makes perfect. Uh, Snuffy Girl says, saw a disturbing job listing the other day. The NSA is looking for somebody to do photogrammetry for them. What do the NSA want with photogrammetry, I wonder? Hmm, I'd like to find out. Uh, NSA, by the way, National Security Agency, I think is what it stands for. It's a United States thing, an agency in the US. That spies on us all over the world. So don't think because they're in the US they don't spy on you in whatever country you're in, because they do. I wonder what they want. Well, I wonder what they're wanting with photogrammetry. That's interesting, Sniper Girl. Um, Ron Buki says permission to post a YouTube link, not in Twitch chat, but you have permission on the Discord server. Von Buki, only subs can post in Twitch chat, but uh, everyone can post on Discord. So jump into the Discord server and uh, post the link there. Uh, Sniper Girl says, <laughs> WTF, would the National Security Agency need for photogrammetry? Yeah, I'd like to know too. A sniper Echo says to Sniper Girl, do let us know when you get the job. <laughs> I, I would want to work for the NSA. No. Sniper Girl says uh, she doesn't want to work for them either. It's kind of free. I, I'm, I'm freaking out too. I'd love to know what they want. I can only imagine. I can only imagine what they're up to. It's interesting though, Sniper Girl. Interesting to hear about that. Sniper Echo says, but you could probably drive the van in real life. I mean, you could do anything in the NSA. Uh, Von Buki says, rolls eyes. I'm not that desperate to share. <laughs> I'm sorry, Von Buki. I know some people don't like the Discord, which is fine. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry you can't post your link in Twitch chat, but it really only subs can do that. Um, 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 um. But if you do want to post it on the Discord and you do join the Discord, you must let me know because there's a, a cool down period before anyone can post links on the Discord if they're new to it. Uh, I can override that though. So. What was the link to Von Buki? Just curious. Um, Sniper Girl says the Sniper Girl here, no try. All right, so we're working on the shader. We want to make sure we change it to interactive. We want to bring in our normal map, which is this one. Oh, again, I must remember to make sure that I override my gamma to one. <laughs> Let's bring in the color map. And the metallic map. The roughness map and finally the ambient occlusion. Make sure we turn them along. Make sure we selected the object and let's assign the shader. Uh, I do also just want to make sure I copy the name for the shader. Underscore match for material. Okay, yeah, th this th I, I will end up over painting this in Mari. I'll just add a bit more interest to the texture because it's a little bit boring. I'll do that for both of these, but we'll do that once we're finished doing a base texture for all the others. So I'm just going to select this one. Instead of buffer, we're going to call this one lower. Big surprise. Let's send that over to Substance Painter. Uh, 
uh, Wambuki says it was a video for first place winner at Assembly 2018 using Notch. It's a good example of what I what I can do. Uh, it's also delightfully delightful eye candy with other with color palettes or die for color palettes to die for. Okay. Alrighty, the first thing we need to do is bake out our curvature maps and all that. So use the high poly as the low poly. Again, I'm going to go to a 2K texture here and bake out. Uh, back into our smart materials. Let's make those bigger so we can see them. Throw down the temple rings. And let's just make a couple of adjustments to the scaling again. Make sure I turn off the the height, the normal, and the roughness for the moss. <laughs> One boogie, I'm glad to see you're in the Discord server. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? Boo to you too. Let me just um, make a couple of adjustments here to your account in Discord. Uh, because, like I said, there's a cooldown period for new members, but uh, I'll waive that for you so that if you want, you can post links. You can now do that in Discord, Bonbuki. You have the power. So if you want to post your link in Discord, we can check it out. Oh, cool. Let, let's have a look at this. Uh, I'm just curious. I'm just going to do a quick save here before I do anything else. <laughs> So Bombuki has posted the uh, the link to to the program he was talking about. Sniper Girl says to me, just found another photogra photogrammetry job, this time for the US Department of Defense. Yeah, look, I've, I've done work for the Defense Department as well. They, they use photogrammetry quite a bit. Not that I can talk about it because uh, they'll Lock me up, throw away the key, and never let me out. But I've done defense work using photogrammetry as well. You think NDAs are bad when you work for a studio? You do you, you do work for the defense department. That's even worse. You can't talk about it. You can't say what you worked on. It's interesting when you go to a job interview and say that, yes, I work for the defense department. No, sorry, I can't tell you anything about it. Um, Snappy Girl says requires top secret security clearance. Yeah, there, we have these different levels here in this country as well. Uh, special security clearances to do defense work. And it takes months and months to get those clearances. They cost a fortune. But the company, like the Defense Department, pays for it. You don't pay for it. But they vet you. They go through your friends. They go through your background. They go through your finances. They do everything. Uh, but once you've got it, you've pretty much got it for life. Uh, <laughs> how do I pronounce your name? K I W W S. Is it Q? 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 I, I, I'm tongue tied with that one. Can you sort of phonetically say how I'm supposed to say your name? K I W W S. Uh, the cooldown is about, I think it's a half an hour, it could be 20 minutes. Do you want me to cool you to to add you immediately? I can do that. I can do that for you. I'll do that for you right now. Uh, you're you're a member, so you you can post links now. K I W W S. <laughs> but I think it's about a half an hour generally to cool down. And my apologies for not being able to say your name. <laughs> Uh, 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 what if I call you Ki? 
Will you understand? Will you recognize it if I call you Ki? Because I can't pronounce that. Q Q Q. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll call you Ki. Okay. No problem, Ki. Um, Snappy Girl says, "Yeah, I was just looking up photogrammetry jobs. That's all." Uh, Von Buki says, "I could tell you about about it, but then you'd have to cook. But then I'd have to cook you dinner, and that would probably kill you." <laughs> Uh, I just want to check out this link though that Bombuki has posted. So th this is the software you were talking about, Bombuki. I'm assuming it better it better be stream safe. I'll be very annoyed if it's not. Um, uh, and I don't want to infringe anyone else's copyright on YouTube, particularly now with the. Um, I'm just going to mute this. Number one, another one, Fairlight. So what is it? First place at Assembly 2018. I'm just curious what this is. So I'm assuming this is the software you were talking about, Bombuki. Okay, so this is the first place winner at Assembly 2018 using Notch. It's a taste of what it can do. It was made in Notch. There you go. That's a cool effect on the text. Yeah, that is cool. Actually, it's very cool. I'll have to check Notch out. I don't do a lot of uh, motion graphics work. Like, I, I, I use uh, After Effects and Premiere Pro, but uh, I generally only use them to do some video editing stuff. That does look cool. Very cool. Uh, because I'm always interested in case I do need to do any stuff for the studio. I'm assuming this is going to be... Yeah, generally this sort of stuff I would do in After Effects. Is there any sort of... Is it not just standalone program or is there a plug-in for, say, After Effects for it? Legmog, it's good to see you, Legmog. Says that's uh, certainly a step above Minecraft graphics, uh, if that is the case. To Sniper Girl. And hello to you too, Legmog. I hope you're well. We're just looking at a program called Notch that uh, Von Buki was telling us about. And this is... Um, This is a first place winner at Assembly 2018 and they use Notch to create it. It does look very cool. Sniper Girl says to Legmog, yeah, bit Google Notch and that's all that's coming up. <laughs> uh, Bambuki says standalone. The idea is that it can be updated on the fly to track whole projecting onto buildings. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Or well, people. Yeah, that sounds very cool. Actually, I really like those. Uh, we have a festival in Australia here once a year where they do, they project images onto buildings in the city in Sydney. And they basically cover the entire city in different city, uh, different buildings in the city with these uh, colourful projections. I can see how it could be really useful for that. Legmog says we have both snipers here and us today. Yeah, that's right. They got we got the sniper echo and the sniper girl. We're, we're surrounded by snipers, but that does look very cool. Um, Bonbuki. I'll have to check it. Read up a bit more about Notch. That sort of thing, though. I generally, like I said, I'd probably end up doing that in After Effects if I needed an effect like that, using one of the particle effects in After Effects. But like this may stop. It might be easier or. Easier to use, better to use if you're doing that sort of work. I'll check it out. 
Oh, it was used in the last Docklands Festival in Melbourne. Seriously, because I live in Melbourne. I didn't know that, Von Bucky. That is very cool. Now, again, I could see how it could be really useful for those project projections that they do on buildings and things. I didn't actually go to the Docklands Festival when it was on here in Melbourne. I should go to the next one, though. Um... Right. Sniper Girl says to Legmog, we have the legendary band Sniper Rifles. <laughs> uh, did you go to the uh, festival, Von Buki? Bon Buki? The uh, Docklands Festival? Legmog says, God, these kind of videos make me depressed. It reinforces my dreaded sense of one day I'll need to set aside like 20 bajillion hours to get to grips with all the latest new technology. <laughs> oh no, you're in Sydney. Well, it's good to see another Australian on the stream. Most of these guys and girls are from the United States. I do get people from Europe popping in a lot. Well, Sniper Echo is actually an island. Um, but it's rare that I have anyone from Australia, unfortunately. Uh, maybe it's the time that I stream because it's, it's like daytime in Australia here. I think Chiwatara, though, is in New Zealand, so that's the closest I've come. Sydney Cider, hey? Well, there are no, rival, no rivalries here between Melbourne and Sydney. They're both great cities. Let's export this texture. I'm going to export this one again as a 4K texture. Sniper Rick says to Lake Mog, just play with the material nodes and you'll be well on your way. That's right. Just play Lake Mog. That's what, you know, that's half the fun. There's always something new to learn in whether you're doing programming or you're doing art or 3D or even just 2D art. There's always something new to learn. There's always new software coming out. They're always updating software. It's a never-ending learning experience. Uh, Bonbuki says Tuatara would have would have to be a Kiwi. Uh, Legmog says Sniper. Oh God, I've never touched material nodes yet. Well, you should, Legmog. No, the node network is the way to go. It's the way of the future. They're all using nodes now. All the software. And they're, they're really powerful, using a node-based network. Galen says, I uh, didn't know people actually lived in New Zealand, thought it was just sheep and hobbits. <laughs> oh, that'll get a reaction from Tuatara. It's beautiful, New Zealand. If I didn't live in Australia, I'd live in New Zealand. I think it's beautiful. Beautiful. You've only got to look at the hobbit to see the uh, landscape in New Zealand. It is just beautiful. I mean, don't get me wrong. Australia has some beautiful spots as well. Um, but New Zealand, love it. So beautiful. Okay, let's close. Let's just do a save of this project and close this one down. Jump back into 3D Studio Max and create a new shader. You see where this is going? It's going to be a rinse and repeat every time we make. Uh, we design every time we create a texture. We're going to be jumping backwards and forwards. This is the lower. We want the color map. Let's just hook that up here so that we know what this DirectX shader is going to be we're going to be adding. Change it to DirectX. Discard the old one. Let's name it. Lower underscore mat. Uh, Sniper Echo says to Legmonger, I was full sure you would dive in after I pushed that world aligned texture. Sniper Girl says, I honestly haven't touched material nodes of any type in a while. I uh, have a few master ones that I use and really haven't needed anything new. It is really important to come to grips with material node editors because they're, they're used everywhere. And they're really powerful. Uh, if you do material stuff in, in, in Unreal Engine, you're using their node. They all pretty much work the same way. Pretty much. So if you, if you can use the one in UE4, you can use pretty much any material node. Um, von Buki says, The most remote spot I've ever been is to Chatham Islands, middle of nowhere. I'm not familiar with where that is, uh, Von Buki. Legmog says, right now I'm doing lots of 3D animation. I get the impression that the core fundamental essence of 3D animation 
is essentially very unchanged. It's textures, lighting, rendering, and fancy smancy abstract effects, where it seems uh, to most technological innovation occurs. But even animation, they come up with new ways to make that easier for you guys to animate your stuff. Galen says, would love to visit New Zealand and Australia on my bucket list. Well, I can guarantee, uh, you should come to Australia and go to New Zealand. They're both beautiful places. But uh, come to Australia when in, in winter, if you, unless you really, really like the hot weather. Uh, winter is the time to come to Australia. Uh, Legmog says, 3D animation is basically okay. You've got keyframes and F-curves and uh, yeah, that's everything. <laughs> Go animate. you got splines and things that you can manipulate and, and on your keys and, and all that sort of jazz. Bezier curves and all that sort of jazz. Um, Galen says, most exotic place I've been other than Thailand is swimming in the Pacific at the equator off the back of a submarine. Oh, <laughs> that sounds cool. Uh, Bonduki says it's about a third of the distance between New Zealand and Oz, but in the opposite direction. Oh, okay. Mm, that's, that's, that's out there then. Sniper says you can animate uh, using nodes also. Sniper Girl says, yeah, true, was, pre was preferring to Unreal. Have one for adding moss onto stuff. Yeah, I have one of those as well. Uh, one for raindrops, puddles, and one for ice. One for snow, one for adding dust. Pretty much everything you need. It sounds like you've got all the bases covered, so now we go. Now Legmark says, oh god, don't tell me you can animate with nodes now. When will these madmen ever stop innovating? <laughs> Come on, you're still you're still young, Legmog. You got years and years of learning ahead of you still. Now let's load in the normal map. Uh, dome ring lower, that's the one we want. We want the normal map. Make sure we override our gamma or we will be in trouble. Let's bring in the color map. And the metallic map. The roughness map. And finally, the ambient occlusion. And there you go, Galen saying to Legmog, he's done an entire animation just using curves. <laughs> Legend right there, as Sniper Echo says. Uh, Legmog says, well, I always uh, was a bit of a square. No wonder I get, don't get along with curves. Ah, oh, Legmog. <laughs> Wanbuki says, when I learned Photoshop 20 years ago, I saw my Bezier would be burst up against the wall when the revolution came. You're an old hand then, Wanbuki, aren't you? 20 years ago for Photoshop, wow. Uh, Sniper Girl says to Legmog, yeah, can animate with texture nodes. Galen says, you certainly can. Galen says, um, of course, none of the characters had a ring, had a rig. My apologies. <laughs> Uh, let's make sure we've got that selected. Let's assign the texture. Oh, let's make sure we turn our textures on. We don't have an emissive map, but we do have an ambient occlusion map. Make sure we set these back to zero too on the roughness. I keep forgetting about that. And let's assign the texture. I'm just going to go through here and make sure I have reset my roughness here to zero on these other shaders. That one is. And that one is. Good. Okay. Now, this is really starting to bother me. The color here is starting to bother me. So I'm going to jump into Photoshop really quickly. Uh, I could make the changes in Substance Painter, but it's going to be quicker and easier for me to make these changes in Photoshop. I just don't like the color of the cement on these rings. So I'm just going to make a couple of tweaks. And we're going to take those textures into Mari and uh, overpaint them anyway. So 
But until then, because I have to look at it while I texture up the rest of it, and it's driving me insane, I'm going to just to make a couple of tweaks. Um, I'm going to start with the lower ring and we'll work our way up. I just want the color map at this stage. Let's look at an adjustment way here. Um, might just look at the exposure. I'm just pulling up here on the exposure a little bit. Uh, bon, bon Buki says, yes, early Apple machine days. Wow. <laughs> Apple, wow, the old Apple machines. Uh, Legmog says, yeah, that reminds me of my early days of 3D when I would model my character in individual overlapping segments like I was making a PlayStation 1 era character because uh, I didn't know how to rig yet. <laughs> Sniper Echo says, I love setting up a small character animation with only a few keys and adding subtle, subtle movements, uh, enhancements to using animation nodes. Legmog says, so Sniper, please pray tell what is an animation node? Um, I'm just going. I'm just just going to pull up just a little bit on the exposure. That's uh, just the exposure. Just looked a little bit too low. I'm just going to resave that uh, texture now. I'm going to save it over the original version. Uh, I think it's saving out as PNG. Yes. I'm just going to jump back into Max to check that. Okay, we can see the difference in color here between the lower one and the upper one. I think I might have gone a little bit too much. I might just throw down a levels as well, I think. I could throw down a curves, but I'll work with the levels. Uh, and I'm just pulling this in because you can see that we have no information at the beginning or the end, so we can just tighten up our levels a little bit. Let's save that out again. Because even after I do an overpaint, I still want to make sure that the, uh, the, the color is correct. Uh, lower ring, that's the one we're working with. I'm just going to force it to reload the texture here, the color map. And this is it's the lower ring here we're working on, not the upper one, the lower one. Bonbuki um, says, anyone doing character animation? Have you looked at the new Kinetics? Kinect for doing home motion capture. This is the through the the Kinect that uh, that the Xbox has. I'm assuming you mean Von Buki. The Xbox Kinect. Uh, Legmox says, please God, Von Buki, have mercy. Don't tell me they've now invented a magic wand that just makes it all happen with a simple way. Uh, Sniper Girl says to Legmog, stuff like panning, creating static for like a TV, wind simulations on grass vegetation, can be controlled by the material editor in the in Unreal, um, amongst several other things, yeah. That's right, all that all sort of animation work can be done through the node, the texture node. Uh, Legmog says, I got it, phew, <laughs> I was thinking it somehow pertained to character animation. Sniper says to Legmog, they are nodes that you can use to control any animation state or effect. Uh, Von Buki says yes, but it's it's the new PC version with all these sensors that are going into the HoloLens. Ah, oh, I'm not familiar with the new one. The old one could give you rudimentary animation. You could even do photogrammetry with the old one. It wasn't great photogrammetry, but you could. Um, I haven't looked at the new Kinect sensor on the Xbox One. I'm sure it's good though. Microsoft improved their stuff all the time and HoloLens is supposed to be amazing. Me wanty, me wanty now. I want that HoloLens. I'm just sort of um, 
going to do, 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 do. jump back into here. I'm just going to pull out a little bit on my levels. I think I went a little bit too heavy handed. Uh, let's do a save again. OBS has been so good. I've been dropping no frames. I'm I'm impressed. Or Twitch. Twitch has been good. Which is, I don't know which one it is, but whichever one it is, I'm I'm grateful. No frames dropped. Been nice and steady. I think that's a bit better. It's just a little bit lighter. I think I pulled the levels down a bit too much before. Uh, let us work with the next one now. Back into Photoshop. Let's open up the upper texture. And because I'm a lazy sort of person, I'm going to arrange my workspace to tile up vertically. And I'm just going to copy these two modifiers across, these two adjustments. And save that. It's not being lazy, it's being efficient with your time. That's what it is. Uh, Sniper says to Legmog, they're in Blender and I would assume Cinema 4D, Maya, Max, Von Buki says yes you could and that's why buying one of the, one, that's why buying one on eBay was 800 bucks, wow, that's a lot of money. Legmog says yeah in Cinema 4D you can create motion clips, I've done that for my project, got walking, running and idles that I can easily switch to. Uh, but things can get very complicated when you say you want to have certain areas of the rig not be affected by the motion clip. Yeah, well of course Max has Cat built into it as well, which you, where you can load and save out animation clips and apply them to different skeletons and all that sort of thing. I'm not an animator so I haven't got, gone into it in depth in Max, but I know it is in there. Let's jump back into Max. Let's reload that texture on this one. Now that's interesting. Let me just jump back here. Ring upper. Color map. I wonder if it saved it to the wrong spot. This color, this color. Bombuki says posted the promo clip on Discord. Okay. Oh, okay. This is a hollow lens. Let's check this out. Let me just open that up. Again, anyone watching me who is not familiar with my channel, maybe it's the first time you are watching the channel, you can go to fieldos3d.com. Fieldos3d.com and you can read up about me there. This is the promo for the uh, HoloLens, I believe. Or for the Connect, the new Connect. Azure Connect. Companies love these, these three-dimensional put-togethers now. It's used all the time. It is very cool. I like, I like them, but it's, yeah. You know, these all CG, of course. This is not the actual object. This is all done in CG. It's all rendered. I mean, that's probably what the thing will look like, but this is not. This is all rendered out, this animation sequence. That is very cool. So is, how portable is this? Is your connect? So is this the thing that was eight hundred bucks? I'm just wondering how portable it could be. Could you take it out in the field? I'm just curious what how the power source how how it's powered whether you need to plug it in. Sniper says I must pester you about this on your next stream to Leglog. 
Uh, Legmark says, come now, Phil, you sell yourself short. We all saw your bird animation. <laughs> you shut up, Legmog. <laughs> you get the stink eye, Legmog. Yes, my wonderful bird animation. I animated an eagle for a cinematic that I created that I made in UE4. Uh, and the guys and girls know I'm not an animator. And Legmog's being a smart ass as usual. Telling, telling you just how wonderful my animation of the eagle was. And I've never pretended I was good. It was usable. Wasn't great, but it was usable. Uh, Sniper says, yeah, the bird. Legmog says, the bird probably uh, flew away because it was hungry and realized the house had no kitchen. <laughs> oh, man. You guys. You guys. Uh, slap incoming. Yeah, you do. You both, you're going to get a slap. Both of you are going to get a slap, actually. Yeah, that's right. You both get a slap. That's for both of you. Cheeky. Cheeky buggers. Uh, Legmark says, don't worry, Sniper. I plan on avoiding the slap by locking myself in the toilet. Oh. Um, Bonbuki says the Azure is about 450, I think. Uh, KI says, Maxon buys Redshift. Hope they don't destroy the price and product. Yeah, me too. Um, I haven't used Redshift, but I've heard people, I know of people that use it and they really like it. Um, it's never good when one company buys another either. Uh, Sniper says, I noticed that bird wasn't in the Epic Award video. I didn't even know there was an Epic Award video. I, I actually haven't seen the Epic Award video, but it doesn't surprise me that uh, Epic Games cut my bird out. <laughs> you know, I guess they got to make cuts somewhere. It's a five minute long cinematic. If you guys that are watching want to see that cinematic, go to my YouTube channel. You can find links to my YouTube underneath of my stream in my panels. Uh, the cinematic is posted on my YouTube channel in all its 4K glory. It's a cinematic I created in UE4 and won an award from NVIDIA and Epic Games for in August. So, Which was very nice of them. So it doesn't surprise me it wasn't in the video, so very clear. What did you do, Sniper? What, 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 what didn't you do, Sniper Echo? Come on. What did you do? What didn't you do? What don't you do? You always deserve a slap. Legmog says, Maxon purchased Redshift, and Sniper says, yep. <laughs> Legmog says, yes, I used Redshift before. Please, God, just integrate it into Cinema 4D, and I can get it for free as part of my yearly renewal subscription. Von Buki says, like Adobe by Algorithmic. Yes, I know. Wasn't that a shock? <laughs> People were not happy about it, let me tell you. Now that Algorithmic are going to start going subscription, because that's how Adobe goes. The way Adobe goes, that's the way Algorithmic will be forced to go. Uh, KI says to Legmog, says so in the Maxon website. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's never ever good when these companies start buying up other companies. You don't tend to get it's never good for the user it's only good for the company and and the subscription model I really really hate the subscription model I think it stinks you never own your software and if you stop paying the subscription you can't use it anymore okay I'm just actually gonna lighten this up a little bit I want a bit more of a difference between those two colors so what I'm gonna do here is I think I might use this one instead of playing with the actual levels. I'm just going to lighten it up a touch. Well, again, I'm just going to make sure it's reloaded in that shader. Legmark says, I posted a project I did in Redshift back in December. It was for a UK children's charity. It's in the Discord gallery. Let me have a look. <laughs> oh, sorry, I just see that, um, that my bot has just posted in my social media channel on my Discord server that I've just gone live. It's only, you know, posted it 
an hour and a half late from when I actually went live. You naughty naughty bot. That's the error spot. Now let's have a look at this thing that... Okay, hang on. I see KI, you just you posted something as well. Let's have a look at that. Uh, KI says, working on a short film, just started working on the environment and finally done with the rigging. Let's have a look. Love looking at the stuff you guys are working on, have worked on, will be working on, all that sort of thing. So this is KI. My apologies because I can't pronounce your username. <laughs> so this is uh, an orc, obviously, that KI is working on for a short film. Nice, I like the lighting. Yes, I like the light. Actually, I like the animation as well. That's really cool. I'm just going to get that to play in a loop a couple of times. Uh, yeah, I like the environment. Are you using a mega scan here, I'm assuming, maybe? I like the animation here. And the model, I like the model as well. The model looks great. Stop that. It looks great. I'll check yours out in two seconds too, leg mark. Um one more time while I read the chat. Uh, mega scan, yep, I thought it was a mega scan. But that's the lighting was nice. I love the animation work and I love the, the actual character as well. It looks great. Modeling on the character is very nice. The animation is very nice. Uh, and the environment that was looking great too. I love the lighting. Very cool. I can't wait to see the short film uh, as well. Okay, so make make sure you keep us updated here in the Discord or pop or, or watch the while I'm streaming. Let me know. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, Leg Mog says, "Here's my Redshift project." Let's have a look at Leg Mog's Redshift project. The leg mug always does nice work too. <laughs> I love it. That's very cool, leg mug. I like this. When did you post this? Twenty nineteen. Okay. So what was this for, Leg Monk? Is this uh, some work you did for Everyday Swaps for to make a difference as sugar? That was that was really cool. I really like that. Nice work, Leg Monk. Very nice work. Looks great. <laughs> Very nice indeed. Uh, Legmog is an animator, if anyone that doesn't know. Uh, Legmog is actually a streamer as well, so you should check him out when he's streaming. Um, and he's working on a pilot episode at the moment of a series. that he, His own personal project is a pilot series. Uh, Von Buki is saying animation was slick. It was. Uh, Legmog says, dang, I'm, I, I too am working on a short film. Yep. <laughs> And leg mug's a show off. He is a show off, isn't he? And leg mug says, uh, "Thank you." Yeah, change for life is all about cutting down childhood obesity. It does it very nice, nicely done, nicely animated. Nice, nice, nice. But you always do nice work, leg mug. We um, we got a bit done today. We're getting there. We're slowly working our way down the terrace here. It's starting to texture stuff up. I uh, do keep in mind too, I'm going to be taking these photogrammetry pieces into Mari to do some fixes on, but we'll do all the Mari work once we've done all the algorithmic painting work. Uh, but we're getting there. It's just, I'm still not completely happy with the colour of the texture of the cement here. We are going to be overpainting it inside of Mari, so I shouldn't get too caught up on it at this stage. 
we can make those small adjustments to the colour um, once I've painted over it in Mari. But I think we might leave it there for today. Let's make sure we do a quick save because uh, I, I turn auto save off and if I don't save manually, I'll lose my work. That would be bad. Uh, Legmog says... Um, you finished it in about two months. Uh, KI says, I think I finished it in about two months. Uh, Legmog says, they hired Aardman Animations to make a television commercial, but they also wanted a web commercial too, because Aardman was very expensive. <laughs> I'm sure they were. Uh, they got a, they got Legmog in to work for Peanuts, but I had to make it look like it could have been made by Aardman. Well, you did a very good job. I love the sugar cubes with the little legs and the mouth. Uh, Legmog wants me to snap Sniper Echo again. Uh, I don't know, Sniper's already had his slap for the day. <laughs> um, I think we might leave it there for today though, guys and girls. I do want to thank you very much though for hanging out with me, being here and watching. I want to thank um, Palo, KI and Grassroots for the follow. I do appreciate that guys. Um, I will be back on again tomorrow uh, at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States and that's 10am uh, in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. Um, we will pick up where we left off here. We'll continue texturing up the bits and pieces for our wind, Temple of the Winds Terrace model here. Because uh, remember, we are going to be adding particle effects as well as part of the, the main beauty render. Legmog says, all right, Bill, great stream as usual. See ya. Well, see you too, Legmog. Uh, thank you guys very much for being here. I appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you guys and girls tomorrow at 5pm Pacific. You guys take care. Have a good night. See you guys.